Hi and welcome back to the Tudor Lounge. We're bringing it uh, from Tutakaka, our studio in Tutakaka. And today we have Ange Jonesy Jones in here with us. Um, and she's going to um, give us a look at the djembe mm -hmm. drum. Um, welcome to the show, Ange. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks for Mark. coming in. On your way into town to do um, a workshop for some students. Um, so firstly, Ange, um, why um, did you get into this wonderful drum? What got you into it? Well, I went to a introductory workshop. It was held here in Whangarei by a woman called Jackie. It was about eight years ago now. And what I really loved was once we'd learned a rhythm, we were in this space, a circle of maybe 30 people. And for me, it was the complete connection that the drum created between all of us, as well as being able to hear lots of different layers, as people, you know, played together, and I just thought this is fantastic. I yep. felt very alive. And For you, why loved it. why drum as opposed to guitar, piano? Hmm. I learnt a little bit of guitar when I was younger, but I guess what I like about the drum is that it's actually very it's, it's a simple instrument in the sense that you there's very few notes, um, and it's really about playing. So there's not much. It's not complicated. So that works for me. Whereas mm -hmm. if I needed to learn the guitar or piano, I think that would be quite an involved process. Yeah, sure. Yeah, would well, yeah, I get that? Although in saying that, um, drums are really um, probably the most complex of all the instruments anyway. Because that one behind us, you know, which kind of like sure. quadruples up on, you know, those things. You can just play that for your life, and you'll never, you know, completely master it. So I get what you're saying. Simplicity, but complexity. Excellent choice. Um, can you show us a little bit of a, a rhythm on that? Maybe just before that, where does this drum come from? And where did this style of drumming originate, do you know? Okay, so the djembe drum is from West Africa. Um, and this one in particular is from Ghana. <coughs> and it <coughs> originates from, it's one of the key instruments of griot musicians. And griot musicians are the storytellers. Right, okay. And they use drums. They use the African harp called the kora, um, and they also use dancing and song in order to tell yep. tell a story. Tell a story. Got it. Yeah. Um, and so the dr this drum djembe is very much involved in lots of different ceremonies, from weddings through to births, um, and also celebrations. Got it. Yeah. Um, I noticed the skin too is, is a rawhide, so it's a natural animal skin, is it? Yes. So this happens to be a goat skin. The goat was. It was yeah. alright, eh? The goat. It's okay, it's in heaven. And, um, mm. yeah, you can actually see, if you can end up getting a close up, but you can see that there's a, a line here. Oh, yeah. Which is the backbone of right. the animal. Right. Um, so you always place that in the centre because oh, yeah. you can tend to get sharper right. sounds. Right, right. And maybe a balanced sound too, eh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, got it. Uh, very interesting. Can we just have a quick look at the carvings on it? Um, and then we'll get into the music side of it because I mean somebody spent some time carving yes. this baby, and there's probably a story in there somewhere, isn't there? Yes, I'd say so. About um, you know, it's uh, orange. And so each yeah, each djembe will be different, and the way you can tell that it has been hand made yes. as well, because some can be machine, is always to look on the inside. Right. What do you see when you look on you the see inside? See that that's all hand carved. Got if it. it's completely Got smooth, it. yeah. it's been made by a machine. Right. What's this made out of? That I do not know. It's a tree though, right? Yeah, be okay. made of a tree. From one piece as well. Yeah. So it's completely carved. Carved out, that's insane. Yeah. So they've carved that right down through to there. Absolutely. Woohoo. All right. Yeah, Very it's cool. not stuck together. All right. It's from one piece. And these are tensioners, right? Yes. Can you tension this? How Absolutely. Tension that's how you sh um, tune it. And tension. Tune it. Yeah. So you can see here the cord yeah. running through. Yes. Yeah. And so. As the skin slackens over time, or yeah, and perhaps heat, and heat exactly, yeah. um, I would undo this cord and okay. I would start another layer. And you kind of stitch it. Oh, you start another layer. Yeah. There. And so you're pulling. Yep. yep. Two together. Wow. Two together. And there's a fair two amount together. of tension on those, isn't it's it? It's completely. And yeah. often what will happen is the the person tuning will sit and have their be using their feet. So be sitting on it, using their feet, really, really pulling cranking them hard them, no, to pull right? it down right? and okay. turning, turning mm -hmm. her around until you get that, until yeah, you can get yeah. a really sharp yeah. Got that. sound. Got that. Um, 
So do you ever see them with like, you don't, you don't ever take the rope off, like you've got one, two, three strands there. Mm. If you want to tension it, you'd ever fall? Yeah. And a flip them you know, so do you ever see them right up there? It's like, oh, this guy's been I nice guess not there. usually, because at, the, at some point the skin is going to... Right, given. Given. Okay, because of its tension and, and yeah. wear. And right, wear. yeah, got it. All right, cool. Let's um, let's get into playing a little bit. And, okay. um, if you can give us a groove. Do you call it a groove on this type of drum? We just, we a would, rhythm. We call it a rhythm. Mm, okay, play some rhythm. because I think the West African rhythms kind of stand alone. They're yeah. always in a three beat okay. three beat structure. Hello. I don't know what the yeah, technical good. term no, yeah. is for that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I personally, I don't know what it would ever fit with. Sometimes when I'm well, jamming... Well, with three and four, because three is like three beats to the bar, so it'll be one and uh, two and uh, three mm. and uh, four, and, uh, and it'll depend on what you put on the bottom, which then gives you, if it's a quarter note, it'll be four, one, two, three, four, and it'll be one and a two and a three and a four and a, so most of them are in threes, right? Eh? They are. That was a four, which I played, right. so normally you're going to hear something like... which used to happen for me a lot is I would play and I would come away completely bruised. bruised. Right. So now you may notice as I'm playing my thumbs okay. just naturally up. I do notice now. I mean this drum has a lovely ridge so I've actually got a level of safety as well. Okay. Um, but essentially there's three key notes oh. um, which is the bass. In the centre? Centre, yep. hit with this part of palm the hand, the hand. Palm of the hand. Got it. Tones which is just muted sound at the side, usually this part, yep. and then slap. Ah. Open fingers. I, I personally use open fingers. It can be done. But well, I notice you're getting right a lot more done. tone out of the open fingers because yeah, the air moving through it, I can hear the difference exactly. in the tone. It's much nicer. You may uh, not notice if you ever watch a master African drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, that his hands won't change, yeah. so he'll be able to get that range without yeah, yeah, sure, changing yeah, his fingers. Yeah, sure, yeah, because he's a master, of for sure, mm, a drum master. Um, yes, you must take your wedding ring off too, eh? Absolutely, mm. or never drum with rings on. No, I got told off once by somebody, and I think it was Dave's brother. brother. Take your rings off, right? When I'm, yeah. yeah. That's True. right, Another or even different. put a plaster over. If you can't take yeah. it off, can't divorce, yeah. just tape it up. Yep, no, got that. Um, so I also was watching you play the other day when you were on stage with yes. um, the band and you were numbing something over here right, with one hand. Can you show us that technique? Sure. So that would be, um, that's another yeah. layer. So being able to place your hand there or there just to be able to get, and you can again Numbs do it. the tone and you can do the slap. Numbs the sound, just gets that nice, particularly for the reggae as right. I was playing along to. Yeah. just another texture that you get is there any point to really to that because when you numb it to me it doesn't sound as nice as those in tones so you're just looking for another sound out of it i'm yeah? just looking for another sound yeah okay and is that a traditional method yes yeah. yes there is there are rhythms that have muted notes in them right yeah as right. well yeah um so when you um are playing this thing is there always a kind of a, a 
a tempo that sits best with it, or can it just be any tempo? You can go like super fast, super slow, or is there somewhere in between all of that that always works? Again, it depends. Yep. It's a mixture. It depends what you're playing, Yeah. and it depends on if you're playing in a group, the level of the group, yep. and how fast the group right. wants to go. Yeah. So if you were going to add this to a rock band, for instance, mm -hmm. what would you be doing? Like, you know, and you've got a really kind of rocky groove, you can just sort of go hard on that. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. you still find the tones <coughs> in between it, even though the speed, yeah? Should be that would take to. technique too, then wouldn't it, eh? Because you'd right. be, be thinking all the time. So that's where it gets really complex. Yeah, it's um, uh, pretty cool. Um, how often do you play it? As in, you know, playing it within um, other instruments, you know, on stage? Are you Usually, actually, it's, usually it's quite unique. Here I find, in New Zealand, that the djembe gets used a lot more to play with other instruments. Right. Whereas, um, because I'm living in London at the moment, yeah. because there's a much more of a bigger drumming community, yes. it will actually just be drums. Right, right. So yeah, got you, got you. Yeah. I find that, yeah, I only really tend to be an accompaniment yep. here. Here. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Um, so you do some, some workshops and some lessons here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you're doing them at the Quarry Art Centre at the moment. Yep. And that's only for a few more days because you're off back to London, right? That's right. And you're coming back to do some more? I usually teach sort of February, March time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So How can people summer. get into, um, like, get a hold of you knowing that you're going to come back if they have some interest, you know? Mm. And this, do you have a website or a Facebook or something like that? They could uh, contact me through Facebook. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how that would actually work. Work with my name and you know how people. Well, I mean, <laughs> anybody that's interested, as with all the other artists yes. that come on uh, the Tutor Lounge, you can always come to us at Universal Records, or you can um, contact uh, Channel North and ask Channel North, you know, for a contact for Ange, and uh, you know they would then do that, you know. Because what is actually happening here now in Whangarei is the students I taught last year, they've continued to meet. So there is an email list, right. there is regular drumming going on yeah. throughout the year, which is a bit more of just about jamming and teaching each other. Yeah. Um, and then there's some structured workshops. Right. So, mm -hmm. yes, if they contact you, then yes. I can leave those contact details. Got that, got that. And it'll always be here in Whangarei because you love the coast so much. I do. Mm -hmm reside out at Sandy Bay when you're here. Um, how many other drums like this do you play? The style of drum. This oh is okay. a banjo. This is a djembe. djembe. Um, mm. Actually, to be honest, djembe has been my main drum. I mean, yeah. I own more, yeah. <laughs> so I have a few yeah. of different sizes. Yeah. But they're um, all djembes. Yeah, the drums that I have. Yeah. Yes, they are. Right. But there's plenty more of, of different types. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, as I say, I said this is from Ghana. Yeah. But they have, actually, they have another drum, which is their main drum, called the Pan Logo. Right. So um, every African country has potentially a different drum. Right. Um, even though the djembe is quite yep. you know, common to Senegal yep. and yep. Guinea, etc. And then, of course, all the Asian countries, you know, there's Tabla in India, mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. and the Nepalese have a double-ended drum yeah, as right, well, right. so yeah, yeah, there's got it. lots of variation. Yeah, yeah, true there is. Probably one of the oldest style of musical instrument out there, eh, really. Okay. Eh, I mean, people have been beating drums since yes. eh, time began. Mm. Very cool. Anything else um, you want to share with us about this? Uh, I guess journey? I just want to say that I think that, um, you know, because we all have a heartbeat, mm. that it is a good instrument just to give a try. It's, um, yeah. If anybody just wants to put their hands on it and just give it, even if you're just giving it a very simple yeah. beat, there's yeah. an opportunity for people to join into a circle. Yeah, so you don't have to be this great um, Absolutely not. musician. Good on you. But you can be a part of it. Yeah, that's as simple as that. Can you do that again for us? Yeah, too easy, eh? Exactly. So you can do that, and then you could develop up doing that again and just have the left hand do something else for a bit of colour. That's right. That simple. Well, there you go, people. Um, thanks very much for spending the time uh, here at the Chew Lounge and uh, with Channel North. Um, good will to put you on TV, even though you're going to be on the other side of the world, but you will be able to tune in and see it, and so will everybody else. And um, we'll let everybody know when uh, that's going to be out on TV. 
So Paul, thanks again. That was Thank just you. wonderful. Yeah. Good on you. Um, we hope to see you again next year. So do I. Don't break.